Hi, my name is Liz Hathaway and this is my astrological look of the week ahead, the week starting the 22nd of April 2019. As you know, I focus on the main um, astrological events in a given week and there's plenty to choose from this week. I mean, if we just dive in on Wednesday, for example, then we see that Pluto is going retrograde. Pluto is pretty much stationary then right now and Pluto stations are always times of crisis in a way. We always see them manifesting in the collective and one of the events that immediately springs to mind is the recent bombings, um, are the recent bombings in Sri Lanka for example. This is very sort of Pluto station type of energy and Pluto is linked to terrorism, terrorist attacks. So yeah the fact that Pluto is about to station, well it is station, it's not really moving already, it's pretty, you know, pretty much ground to a halt, but it will go retrograde on Wednesday, followed next week of course by Saturn turning retrograde as well. So in a way the giants are sort of slowing down, they're taking stock, they're pulling back, they're doing the inner stage of the work if you like, that inner process of, um, it's quite alchemical in a way, that inner process of you know, looking at yourself, looking at the raw materials, you know, the things in yourself that you need to, um, well, really work through, deal with at this moment in time. Um, you know, what needs to be cooked, what needs to be heated up, what needs to be gone through, what needs to be sorted, what needs to be shed, what needs to be released, what needs to be reborn. Saturn Pluto themes are very rich in the collective at the moment. And so as I say, this station that we're in, we're actually in this station, it brings things to a head. There's quite an intense energy hanging in the air in the collective and events such as Sri Lanka are really an expression of that Pluto putting all its weight down in a specific degree of the zodiac. But before then, let's do, step back a bit and look at a Tuesday. Tuesday we have the Sun-Uranus conjunction I love this. This makes me think of a kaleidoscope, you know, this sort of beautiful but ever-changing images, looking at things in new ways, in a new light, because it's combined on the same day with a sun Jupiter, sorry, a moon Jupiter conjunction in Sagittarius, which is about feeling good, good fortune, um, good action, good thoughts, good, you know, good feeling as well about the self. The moon is very much about the feeling side of, na of our nature. The, um, the side of us that is also related to our conditioning, our old habits, our old way of doing things. And Jupiter, certainly now retrograde as well, is trying to focus on sort of more positive expressions for the self, more positive um, ways of expressing yourself as well, because Sagittarius is a very social sign. And also on Tuesday we have Venus in Aries conjunct with Chiron as well. So there's also a thread running through here of the feminine, of the wounded feminine. And Venus in Aries is very fiery, she's very bold, she can really uh, make a mark, she stands up for herself. But you know, the need to do that, the need to be strong, the need to be this courageous figure takes its toll as well. And maybe that's what Chiron is pointing to. You know, the need to look at the reasons why we might be doing that, why we might need to feel that we need to stand with a fist in the air. And is there, are there ways in which we could um, identify with the feminine which might be um, kinder in a way and less abrasive. Aries is quite rough, it's like, it's like sandpaper. On Wednesday, as I say, we have sun trying moon, which is really nice, sun in Taurus. You know, it's the sign where the moon is exalted, so the sun receives the moon in a, in, in a grand way, if you like, and the moon in Capricorn is serious, it's very much focused on the real, and because Pluto's retrograding as well on Wednesday, and then Thursday we have the moon conjunct with that just retrograde Pluto. So there's a lot of inner stuff going on here, and we need to be patient. Often Capricorn points to things that are chronic, things that have built up over many years, things that are not healed and, and moved or shifted overnight. So it's that willingness, if you like, to let things happen, to stay with it, to just run the course, to you know, not try to hurry it along because that is not going to happen right now because we have Pluto retrograding on Wednesday followed by Saturn retrograding next week. So we need to take time. 
there is this um, element of confusion. There is also an element of uh, indecisiveness. There's also an element of exaggeration in the air this week, because if we look at what Mars is doing, Mars on Saturday is squaring Neptune. So Mars is starting to sort of reignite, if you like, the themes that are connected to the Jupiter-Neptune square, which are about thoughts about religion, about our life philosophy, our travel plans, our, you know, grand plan for our own life. There is that feeling with Mars, which is much more closer in than Jupiter and Neptune. Mars has to, you know, make the deal, has to put the energy in, has to make things happen. That Mars is kind of pulled in multiple directions. You know, there's a slight indecisiveness and Neptune is very much the focal planet of this because Mars will be opposite Jupiter. It's square in Neptune. Jupiter and Neptune squares coming back in. They're not through with each other yet either. So Neptune is very focal. Neptune in Pisces, you know, dream big, you know, dare to dream, but don't expect quick results. While this T-square, because that's what we've got now is going on, the aim is with the T-square to look at that Neptune, which is Pisces, Neptune in Pisces. That's where the dreams are coming from. That's where the hope is coming from. That's where our, um, you know, we can feed ourselves there. But we should also look to the Virgo. We should also look to the opposite point of where Neptune is, like which is the small things that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis, which might serve to alter what can be under a Saturn-Pluto period, pretty chronic states of affairs, things that have been going on for years that seem like they can't be budged. And you know, the closer we get to the conjunction of Saturn-Pluto, the more, in a way, if we can sit with these issues, the more opportunity that will start to present itself for us to work through that shit and actually rise above it. It's very much an Easter theme, isn't it? That sense of rising up, you know, leaving, you know, what's dead behind us and moving into something new. I wish you a great week. That was my take on it. Thank you for listening. Bye.